Hi guys, my name is Marcel and today you're gonna learn how to draw like a sir. You guys had a lot of questions recently, right? Like, uh, how do you draw backgrounds? How do you use vanishing points? How do you draw perspective? Why am I so charming? Why am I so cool? And why am I such a bad liar? <laughs> yeah, today I'm gonna answer at least one of those, but it, it's not the one with the lying. Uh, yeah. You guys all wanted to know how to draw backgrounds and I hear ya. Uh, but to draw and paint backgrounds like me, there is a couple of things you need to know first. Mainly you have to understand color, there's a video about this topic coming up, don't worry, but also you need to know the basics of perspective and vanishing points, and that's precisely what we'll do today. Let's start from the very beginning with vanishing points, because not only do you need that for backgrounds, but also for objects you need to draw. I'll assure you, after this video, your drawings will go from this to this. Money back. Guaranteed. But wait, aren't these videos like completely free to watch? Uh... Did you guys know I have a patron? This video took me three weeks to make, so if you want to support my content and get some stuff like time lapses of my artworks in exchange, then you can go ahead, but you don't need to, don't feel forced to. Believe me, I know how it feels to be broke. <laughs> uh, can we like start with the video already? Yeah. Thanks. Like always, we're gonna start with the basics first. I'm sorry if you know this stuff already, but I wanna show everything from the start, so that even if you're a beginner, you can still join in. Also, if you look at the timeline, you'll see everything that comes after this part will be super short, so don't get demotivated. It might seem overwhelming, but it really isn't. Cause everything you'll need at the start is a horizon line, and a vanishing point. And your vanishing point needs to lie on top of your horizon line. This vanishing point now attracts all lines that go in this direction. That's a new rule we're gonna establish in this drawing here. Now let's start with something easy. So we're not starting with a building or something, just a simple easy rectangle. And now we're transforming this 2D rectangle we just drew into a 3D cube. To transform this 2D shape into a 3D one, we need to add another plane to this object. And this new plane points towards the vanishing point. And now you get to decide where to cut it off. Also, just a tip for you guys, always draw the wireframe. So basically the skeleton of this drawing. Just draw it the same way I do, with a bit of practice you get a hang out of it, believe me. I know all of you think that drawing this wireframe is completely unnecessary, but you'll be thankful you did it later on. For example, when you want to draw another object behind your drawing, you can use those lines as guidelines. And yes, this also works with objects that lie on top or beside your object. Just envision it as a puzzle. The object you just drew is piece number one, and based on this object you can kind of figure out where the other pieces go. By the way, when you're only using one vanishing point, you need to make sure that the other lines are parallel to each other. Like I just showed you, you're using those lines as guidelines later on. So if those lines are off, your whole drawing will be completely wrong. So always use a triangle ruler for your perspective drawings. So just make sure you understood everything up until now. You can also go ahead and try to draw along so that you are getting some practice out of this as well. Oh, and maybe you've been wondering what's the deal with the horizontal line? Up until now this thing was pretty useless, wasn't it? So what's it even for? Well, your horizontal line determines the height of your artwork. Just imagine it like this. If you're looking upwards in real life, the horizon is further down. And if you're looking downwards, the horizon is at the top part of your view. And the same goes for your art. If the horizon line with the vanishing point are on the upper side, you are looking down on your object. And vice versa, if the line is at the bottom, you're looking up to your drawing. And yeah, of course, if it's in the middle, you're looking directly at your object. But you could have figured that out yourself, I guess. Now, the first thing towards understanding vanishing points was the most important one. Now you can draw anything with a one-point perspective. 
Like, for example, you can make this cube into a house by adding a street. Using a vanishing point, you should be able to draw a simple street without a problem. And you can also add a roof. And the same also goes for a door. Before we go to level 2, there's something I have to show you first, and that's the details. If you take a look at a door in real life, it's not completely flat, but it has depth to it. Because it's 3D. So uh, try to form a habit of drawing things more 3D in your art as well. Let's try it out by drawing this door in the third dimension. Try imagining a box here like we did with the previous example. Start off by, for example, drawing the horizontal lines. After that, you can add the vertical lines. And lastly, we add the lines that go towards our vanishing point. Don't worry, there's no particular order to it. And the rest, you don't need to draw, if you don't wanna, since you can't see it anyway. I'm sorry if you already knew all of this, but some people are still beginners and might be really grateful for that knowledge, so I wanted to include it here. If that's all new to you, then it can be a bit much, so try practicing what I just showed you and you'll be able to draw a simple house like that in no time. Like I said, level 1 was the longest part, it's all smooth sailing from here. The next step is, of course, not to draw with one, but with two vanishing points. Up until now we drew horizontal lines, vertical lines and also lines towards our vanishing point. Easy enough. But now we'll add a second vanishing point to our horizontal line. And this means that the lines we drew horizontally now point toward the second vanishing point. Now I don't really know how difficult or complicated this looked, but let me assure you it's way easier than it looks. Here, let's draw it together. You have your horizon line with two vanishing points. And we want to draw a cube that's about this size. You can now start wherever you want, but I always like to draw the vertical lines first. That way I can measure how long each side is in order to make my drawing symmetrical. The lines on the left are now attracted by the left vanishing points. And the lines to the right are now attracted by the right vanishing points. And just like before, you can cut the cube off wherever you want. But if it's supposed to be symmetrical, you need to measure it out first with your ruler. But don't forget to draw in the wireframe as well. Always remember that this can save you a ton of work later on. Like I promised, this was way faster than level 1, wasn't it? You can now go ahead and also transform this cube into a house by adding a street, or better yet, two streets. And how about the details? Well, let's have a look. We'll draw a door again, just like before. The vertical lines are simple, right? Then there's our lines that go towards our first vanishing point, so just like we did before. And instead of just drawing horizontal lines, we draw those lines towards our second vanishing point. Now, a personal tip from me to you, I like traditional pencils. I really, really do, and I like using them. But for drawings that are this tiny, I always prefer mechanical ones. They always have the same size and sharpness and are just more precise in general. If you want to know where I got mine from, or what kind of ruler, eraser or other equipment I use, you can find everything over at my new website. There's a complete list of all of my materials I use for drawing, and also for making videos. Also, one last thing before we head to level 3, it's really important where on the horizon line you place your vanishing points. If they are too far apart, you might as well just use one vanishing point because it looks so flat. But if they are too close together, it looks like your drawing is viewed through the lens of a $5 GoPro. Except maybe you want that look, I don't know. By the way, I think the whole perspective thing with the horizon line becomes a lot more apparent here. If the horizon line is at the bottom, it looks like you're looking upwards. And if the horizon line's on top, then it looks like you're above the town and looking downwards. Like a bird. Or a plane, or maybe... 
ここより世界に痛みを、no, no, 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 no. Like you saw at the beginning, level 3 will be the shortest. We already saw how the first two vanishing points are attracting the horizon lines like magnets. Before, we just drew the vertical lines straight as an arrow, but now things will be a bit different. Because now we have our third magnet, our third vanishing point. And this one doesn't even have to be on the horizon line, you can place it wherever you want. And this, my dear ladies and gentlemen, was it. You now know at least the basics of drawing vanishing points. There's still one thing left to do now, and it is to actually use this knowledge on your drawings. And I'll show you exactly how in the final level. So now I'm going to show you some things you need to know in order to use vanishing points in your art. But if there was something you didn't understand up until now, you should go and practice it first. I mean, that's what this video is here for. Just pause the video throughout and try to draw along with me step by step. That way you can compare your drawings with mine to check if you did it correctly. If that's too boring, you can also make a photo of your house or something and try to copy those vanishing points as a practice. And if you're drawing on your tablet, this might be even easier. Almost every software or app has a built-in ruler or something similar. And no, this isn't cheating or something. If you consider this kind of drawing assistance cheating, then you should also consider a ruler cheating because it's basically the same thing when it comes down to it. And while we're on the topic of not using a ruler, maybe just try... Uh, well, not using a ruler. I know how absurd this sounds, but that's how I do it. When I have an idea for an artwork, I always scribble down the rough sketch before using any rulers. Only when I draw the more detailed artwork comes the point where I use a ruler to check if everything's drawn correctly. Sadly, if you're drawing traditionally, you'll have a lot more work with all of this. Let's see a quick example. Of course, I had to use vanishing points quite a bit over the last couple of years, for example every time when I drew furniture. But sometimes vanishing points are so far apart that you have to add another sheet of paper to even be able to see your vanishing points. And yeah, I'm afraid there's really no way around it. After a couple of pages, I started fixating it. I'd advise you to do the same thing, because if not, your drawing will be utter chaos. Believe me. Oh, and if you've been wondering about how to draw objects that are round and not angular... Well, just make them angular. I know this sounds like a bad joke, but it actually is not a joke for a change. Let's also take a table for example, just to make things easier, we're drawing a one point perspective here. Let's say we want to draw a simple plate here. Instead of just freestyling it, I draw a rectangle where I want my plate to be. And right after that, I mark the middle of each side. And now drawing a plate will be much easier than before. But of course, it's still a pretty difficult thing overall, if you're not very experienced in it. But this is at least how I would go about it. Also, don't erase the rectangle you just drew, you could use it as a guideline for, for example, a second plate. And if that wasn't challenging enough for you, you can draw more advanced forms, like, for example, a glass. If you want to get into drawing more organic things in perspective, like humans for example, I've already made a video about it. And with that being said, I have one last insider tip for you that will help you drawing perspective. So what's the secret weapon of mine? It's Google Street View. It's by far the best tool for practice in perspective and finding photo references. You can find everything here, tall buildings, landscapes, you can find references for everything and you can even adjust the angle from where you look at it. It's so damn good! If you don't believe me how good this is, here's a manga page I drew before and one I drew after I practiced with Google Street View. Also, you guys keep asking about my manga series, me and my story writer concluded it last year on a cliffhanger and right now it's sadly only available in German. But if you guys are interested in it, I'll translate it someday, I'll promise. Anyway, about Google Street View, it's the best tool for drawing perspective that works absolutely everywhere.
It's the best tool for drawing perspective that works almost everywhere. <clears throat> now there's many more cool things when it comes to drawing backgrounds, but like I said in the beginning, that's all stuff that I want to explain in another video about drawing and painting backgrounds. I'm still a bit hesitant when it comes to that, my channel's only ever been consisting of drawing videos up until now, not painting videos, but if you really want me to, then I can make that video. Anyway, if you subscribe to this channel and activate the bell, you will get notified whenever I'll upload this video about drawing and painting backgrounds. And if you like pretty backgrounds in general, then you can look forward to my art book, which will be available in Winter 21. I'm working non-stop on it right now, and I'm sure you guys will love it. Well then, my name's Marcel, and thank you all so much for watching. I've almost spent an entire month making this video, so all of you watching, liking, and commenting my videos really helps. Thank you for that. And also, thank you so much to my first ever international patron, Alexander. He found my patron even before I advertised it. That absolutely surprised me. I did not expect that. Well, anyway, thank you so much for everything, and I'll see you in the next video. Here on my channel, Draw Like a Sir. See you then.